Hi, Dr. Watson here. We're going to talk about loops and working with loops in GarageBand in this tutorial video. First, a brief definition of loops. One could think of loops as one, two, or four measure um, rhythmic grooves that can be replicated in a project. Now, that's a very general definition. Maybe a more um, uh, academic definition would be that uh, loops are short musical gestures whose repetition is facilitated by music production software such as GarageBand. Uh, loops can involve either recordings, those are audio loops, or sequences which are just uh, MIDI instructions and those are MIDI loops. Um, usually rhythm instruments but they could be uh, tonal instruments like a trumpet uh, but usually drums, pianos, basses, things like that. Um, what's really cool about loops is, at least in GarageBand, that the tempo and the pitch of the loops will match the project. So if your loop was originally recorded at one tempo but your project is at a faster tempo, GarageBand automatically makes that adjustment. Or if your loop was originally recorded in the key of E but your project is in the key of G, again, GarageBand automatically transposes that loop uh, for you. So there's not a lot of technical stuff you have to do when you're working with loops. Let's get to it. Um, this is the loop browser. This uh, icon over here that looks just like a loop uh, is Apple's loop browser. If it's closed, just click on it and it opens up the loop browser. Uh, you can see right now the loop browser is uh, showing us categories of loops uh, in folders. That's what these little buttons are. But you can also look at the loops in this more column view where um, uh, instead of clicking on a folder, um, you click on a category. Like uh, maybe I want to look at all the uh, drum loops that are in the um, category um, jazz and so we can see here the 17 jazz loops that that are uh, available to me right now I'm gonna go back to uh, the folder view also want to notice there's a drop-down menu up here you may or never mess around with if you, if you just keep it at the top you'll be looking at all the loops you have but you could choose to like for instance I happen to have uh, an add-on um, collection of symphony orchestra loops that I purchased a while ago so if I wanted to look at just those loops I would choose that and now I'm only seeing my symphony orchestra um, additional loops but I'm gonna go back to all the loops and um, there's also a favorites category so for instance if you like certain loops you can put them in your favorites folder and then they're easy to find uh, let's talk about auditioning loops so say for instance I wanted to audition the different piano loops I have I would click on the piano category and then click on a loop I'm gonna start way up here at the top 70s ballad piano so if I click you'll listen and hear it click again and it stops this one is a 16 beat loop it is in my favorites folder because I've checked this box. Um, here's 70s Rock Piano 55. Okay. Or let's listen to um, uh, Blue Jazz Piano 1. Kind of a moody blues jazz piano. Okay. One caution I'm going to say early on is that GarageBand does uh, contain a bunch of jingles, which are full out compositions. They're not loops in the sense that they're one particular instrument that you can use uh, to build a composition. They are the composition. And those are GarageBand's jingles. I'm going to click on the jingles uh, category right now just to show you that um, if I click on this that says um, uh, 44th Street Short. <laughs> I'm hearing an entire jazz composition. Right, so I encourage my students not to use these in projects where I'm teaching them about arranging or songwriting or music production. Um, maybe if you're scoring a film and you and you don't have a lot of time and you want to just drag that in because that that particular composition suits your need, that's one thing. But um, don't think of them the same as the the loops we're talking about. So uh, just be careful if you're working with loops uh, not to use entire compositions uh, to build. An entire composition that you're already working on. Alright, let me reset it. Uh, let's just say that we're in that piano category and we like the um, uh, ballad piano. We can drag it and drop it into the track window to use it. So drag and drop, it's as simple as that. Uh, it turns out that this particular loop, um, if you look over here, it said it was 16 beats. And if we look in the track window, we can see that it's four measures of music. So that is 16 beats in 4-4 four, four time. Uh, we're going to hear this being played in C major because that's the key our project's in and we're going to hear it being played at 120 beats per minute and here it is. Ok, 
Again, I'm watching the VU meter get near distortion, but not distortion. But I'm going to pull it down a little bit. You know, we can mix it here. All right, so that's my piano. Um, let's go ahead and reset this and go to drums. Now, the drums, um, similarly, uh, if I know I'm working in rock, I could say drums and rock. Um, we have a classic rock beat. Okay, so I, I might like that one. Um, I'm going to drag that one in. And notice that it's also four measures. It wouldn't have had to be. Uh, let me see if I can find one that's shorter. Um, here's a funky pop that's only eight beats. Okay, so let me drag that in. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the um, classic rock one just for the moment. Um, wait a second, uh, command delete, deletes the track, there we go. So now I have a, a two measure loop and a four measure loop. And this is as good a time as any to show you how you can loop something. So for instance, if I want this ballad piano to go on for a few more measures, I float my cursor over the top right of the region. Uh, that's the green bubble, the region. And you'll see the loop tool appears. It looks like a, a circle arrow. Um, then I click and hold and drag it for as many replications of that loop as I want. You'll see that every time I repeat it, um, there's a little articulation, a little dip. And we can see the original was four measures, and then the replication was four measures, and then four measures. So what we have here is an original and two more replications. In this shorter loop, to get the same amount of music, I'd have to replicate it more times. So we have an original, and then one, two, three, four, five replications. Okay, um, let's hear what that sounds like. Turn the drums down. Okay, let's put a bass line to that. So reset, um, let's go to the bass category. And um, let's do something a little bit different. Here's an afterburner sub bass. Or alternating line bass. Now, not all basses go with all piano parts, but we can try some of these. I'm just looking for something a little different. All right, so I'm going to use this one. I'm choosing it on purpose, a blue loop, to show you that not all loops are green. Some are blue. And the blue loops are audio loops. The green loops are MIDI loops. And that's an important distinction. MIDI loops can be edited a lot more easily. And audio loops... Um, you can't change as much um, individual content. Um, I'll show you that in a second, but just uh, think of an audio loop as a recording. Somebody sets up a microphone and records a bass player or records a drummer, whereas a MIDI uh, loop is somebody programs information that then needs to be played by a virtual instrument, which are what you see over here, virtual instruments that play those. Anyway, let's try these two loops together or these three loops together. Now, I'm not saying that this is the musical marriage made in heaven, that this is you know perfect, but um, the purpose of this video is just to show you how to work with loops, not necessarily how to create the, the best art. That's up to you. Um, but I do want to show you that, uh, for instance, uh, if I wanted to edit a green loop, I mentioned editing MIDI loops is a lot easier. I'm going to click uh, on this region, right? So click on the second uh, track here. Um, go up to my edit window, which is the the scissors, and it opens up information down below that shows you all the MIDI data for that um, funky pop drums. So for instance, here's the bass drum, and here's the uh, cymbal, here's another cymbal. Uh, this must be a snare drum, right? So <coughs> for instance, say you wanted to have right here at the end of or let's say right here, this is a um, two measure loop. So I, I want to make sure I stay in the original. But say at the beginning of measure two, instead of that symbol. There, say you wanted a cowbell. Now that I've done that, it's going to replicate itself all the way throughout. So I've changed the original and it's going to appear in the replications. Of the original. We're going to hear that cowbell every two measures. Um, let me just solo that so you can hear it. There it is. And then as it repeats, there it is again. So that's one of the benefits of working with MIDI loops is that you can change the original and then the, the replication will be changed. Another thing that, uh, for instance, you may have noticed that this piano has a chord uh, change. It changes from one chord to a second chord, to a third chord, to 
to a fourth chord. So let me go back to the original. I'm going to unloop all of that. Okay, this was our original. Say, for instance, you only wanted that piano um, uh, groove for just the first measure. You didn't want it to change chords. There's a resize tool if you float your cursor over the bottom right of the region, and you can drag it. And now I only have the first measure. And I can loop just the first measure. And that may be better in some cases. Let's try all of the, the tracks together here. Now that might get old, but I just wanted to point out that that is possible. So there's a difference between the loop tool on the top right and the resize tool on the bottom right. I have to unloop this to show you that, but the bottom right is the resize tool. And another way that you could do the same thing is you could copy and paste. So I could go up here, uh, let me select this track, select this region and say copy it, then place my cursor here and say paste it. And I'm doing essentially the same thing, only now I can actually move the region around. Um, so that original loop material, um, there's a lot of neat stuff you can do it, with it. Okay, um, we should talk about, let me um, get rid of this region. Let's go back to our original. I'm going to resize this to the original, um, what was it? It was an original two-measure loop. Okay. Next, uh, let, let's talk about um, loop families. If you click on the upper left hand of a region, you'll see a drop down menu that shows you other loops that are similar to the loop you've chosen. And um, those are, uh, we call this a loop family. You may be able to change between the loop from this drop down menu, or you may, at the very least, you'll be able to go back into the uh, category and say, oh, we've got 70s ballad piano three. 70s ballad piano 5, 70s ballad piano five, uh, 6. So if you like one of those, you could um, put them right next to one that you've already used, and it'll make it seem like your um, piano player is, is sort of changing things up a little bit, but staying essentially the same. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and hear what that sounds like. Now just move to a different piano groove. And that's useful because it makes it sound like the same player is playing, only they're just playing something a, a little bit different. All right, um, so we've seen how loops can work together. Um, if I wanted to change this, maybe my the, the singer I'm working with in a project actually prefers in a little higher key, so I'm going to take this up to D major rather than C major. Notice that everything that needs to change, changes. Right? The piano and the bass are now playing up a step. The drums, since they're not tonal, are just doing their thing. Say the, the singer uh, or, or the collaborator I'm working with wants it a little bit slower. So I'm going to double click on the tempo here and, and instead of 120, I'm going to make it 88, a uh, much slower tempo. Right, so now the drummer's playing slower, the uh, bass and the piano are still playing in the key of D, but they're just playing at a slower tempo. So that's the beauty of GarageBand's uh, loops, is that it locks it into the tempo and the key that you choose. Um, I think that's about all that uh, we need to look at right now. For, there's so much more actually to talk about, uh, for instance, recording your own loops, but I think I'll save that for another video. Um, and also matching loops to MIDI files. If you import a MIDI file and using loops, there's some special circumstances. But um, this is the basics of loops, and I think um, that covers those basics.